My name's Peter Liversidge and uh, I'm going to talk about my show here at the Mac titled Doppelganger. The starting point for this show came from a project I was researching for the Scottish National Gallery of Modern Art five and a half, six years ago. And uh, their collection started in the 1950s and the premise for their collection was collecting only from 1900 onwards. But what I found really interesting was the very first piece of work that they bought was a set of these Max Klinger prints, their suite of ten prints, which was actually first produced in 1880 when Max Klinger was in his mid-20s. And there was something really interesting about a contemporary gallery or wanting to collect contemporary works actually went back into, sort of broke their rules, if you like, from the start. So I found that really inter you know, an interesting in into the work. And then we're actually looking at the work itself we went into the print room and there was elaborate sort of uh, boxes made for this beautiful work. I mean the work is sort of psychosexual and within its m sort of multi-narrative in some ways there is this symbolist narrative where the glove takes the place of one of the of one of the people within this group this this woman that Max Klinger falls in love with and it predates Freud and surrealism by 30 years which in itself is it fascinated me in lots of ways. And I was thinking about this piece and how it could, if you like, brought from something that was from 1800s and using the work as an existing, as a starting point to make a new piece. So the room we're in, for example, this Klinger room is based on a, an imaginary parlour. So there's a photograph in the collection of the uh, Gallery of New South Wales. I looked into this image and looked into where Max Klinger lived in Leipzig around the time that he first made these prints in 1880. And this is a photograph of the house he lived in. This room, this recreation of a room, is an imagined space within that, within that house because there was a point where when Klinger was making the work that that when he was looking at the work he didn't want the distraction of outside spaces or the, the sort of physical presence of the natural world. It's materially correct in as far as it's a recreation of a space but it doesn't, it's not based on anything other than an imagined room that Klinger could have inhabited and potentially then could have seen these works as they are installed. Within this space there are, there are leaves that have been collected that are, that represent the leaves and the sort of uh, the garden um, from from that photograph. So it's as if the garden itself is brought into this space, and there are also spiders and um, dead flies and lace wings and daddy long legs that are a part of this. And it is a stage set in some ways, but it's also it is that sense that you believe in it because it's part of where you are. And probably one of the most important parts of this, and tying it back into the title, is the use of a mirror above the, above the fireplace. And that the use of the mirror is that the mirror allows you to be placed within the space, but you see yourself as an image, as a ghost image, which is yourself reversed. So you're not seeing yourself as others see you, but uniquely as you are seen within a mirror, but placed within this architectural space, which itself is a, obviously a, an imagined facsimile. So there is that sense that, you know, in the true sense of doppelganger and the doubling of images, these being in this space, in this parlor, they are reproductions of the actual uh, prints. It's, it's more than all its parts, but then when you take one of those parts and look at it, you know, a leaf on its own is just a leaf, but actually within this context it becomes, it represents a 130 year old photograph. But then when you go into the main space and you see the, the prints blown up so the gloves themselves become life size in relation to the carved Carrera marble gloves that lay on the floor as if they've fallen out of the frame or out of that narrative. The interesting thing about the, in introducing himself into the narrative is that he's looking at himself in the third person and so when you do come across in the fourth print which is uh, Rescue there is Klinger, he is in a boat and he's trying to fish out of the water this kind of glove which in itself is half drowned and it has a face on it and there is that sense that the glove itself has become a character within the set of prints. Uh, in the final print where the glove is placed with Cupid, but the interesting thing about that is that in this instance Cupid is sat with his back 
to the glove, and the glove is vastly oversized in relation to Cupid, but his arrows and his bow, which are his weapons that allow us to fall in love, they are just strewn to one side, and he's sort of casting over his shoulder, looking at this glove as if to say, well, there's nothing I can do for you.